Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this hydraulic crushing animation and we're going to be doing this with soft body physics in Blender. So what that means is we can actually give something, any object in Blender, we can go to our physics tab and give it a physics um, simulation thing here and make it interact with objects that we've animated like this hydraulic press over here. So this is more aimed towards beginners and it's not going to be covering everything that could be said. It's more just to kind of get you started with soft bodies and give you a little fun demonstration of what you could do with it here. So this is not going to be lighting or materials like that, just making this little scene that you see here um, really fun and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get started with this um, soft body simulation. So I've gone ahead and opened up a new scene in Blender 2.91. I'm going to select all of the default objects, I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete those. I'm then going to go Shift A, I'm just going to quickly add in a cylinder. Once you've added in the cylinder, you can just, with it selected, tab into edit mode or just manually go up here and go into edit mode. And then we can go S and Z with all of this geometry selected. We're just going to scale this down um, to make it a bit more of a disc. Now you can make this whatever you want, um, but just, you know, go with your own personal preference. I'm going to go something like that. I'm going to hit 1 to go into my front orthographic view. And with all of this still selected, I'm going to go G. Z, I'm going to move it up till it's sitting on the floor here. And you can actually see the red line here, that's our X axis line. So you just put it right on top of that. Then we're going to go to our face select mode and we're going to click on the top face. With this top face now active, we're going to hit the I key on our keyboard. So hit I and inset that. So we're going to inset it to about here. It doesn't have to be precise, but just something like that. And then we're going to go E to extrude it and we're going to extrude it up um, about that much. So just enough um, so it's out of the camera view when we see it. So once we're done with that, we're going to tab out of edit mode and we're going to give this some modifiers to make it look nice. We're going to go over to our modifiers tab here. We still have this press here active. We're going to go add modifier and let's go and give it a bevel modifier. Okay, so that's all good, but at the moment it's adding the bevel to every edge on here, which we don't want. So we're going to come here to the limit method and we're going to make it angle. So it's just essentially going to say anything within this range here is going to be um, a, given a, um, a bevel modifier. So at the moment that's fine, but the amount is too much. So just grab the amount here and drag it down. And at the moment the bevel is quite sharp. So if you come here to the segment amount and you bump it up, you can see it rounds that out. Now on top of this, we'll add a subdivision surface modifier. And then we're just going to go to object up here and enable shade smooth. So now this looks nice and smooth, as you can see here, right? So now we can get on to the next part. So let's go shift A. Let's add in a plane. And with this plane selected, just scale it up a bit. So I'm going to go about that much. I'm just hitting S to scale it like that. And what we need to do is we need to hit A to select everything and make sure to go control A and apply to scale. Whenever we're working with physics and blood, it's just a good idea to place apply to scale. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the actual thing we want to crush. Now this could be anything. So I'm just going to go with something simple like a sphere. Now I could go to shift A. I can go to my mesh options and add in a UV sphere and like sphere. But what actually works better in my opinion is to add in a cube and just to give that cube a subdivision surface modifier and bump the levels up in the viewport to about three and then just come here to the drop down and apply that. So now we have this and it doesn't have any triangles in it or sharp edges towards the poles. Like if I quickly added in a UV sphere, you can see we have all of these, um, the faces get longer and narrower as it comes towards the top and then you have all of these triangles here, which doesn't seem to simulate as nicely. So just having this as your ball here would be fine. So go hit one to go in your front of graphic view and with this ball here selected, we're gonna go G, Z and just move it up till it's sitting on our floor here. And then obviously we want to take this hydraulic press thing and we want to hit select it. We want to hit G. That's our move key and then Z and just move it up. So G, Z, move it up. If you want to, you can also come up here and just use these move tools. And a lot of people do when they first get started, but it's kind of pointless when you got shortcut keys just to kind of do it real quick. So I never really bother with that. So just hitting G is fine. So just move it up to about here should be fine. And now we have everything in our scene ready to go. In fact, I'm just going to select the ball, go to object and enable shades, move on that. So now we have all of the elements in here and I'm going to show you how to get started with um, soft bodies in Blender. So before we can actually make this ball here interact with things, we need to tell the things that are surrounding it how they need to behave when this interacts with it. So then we're going to have to select these objects. So let's start by selecting the floor. And we'll go over here to our physics tab. So you just tab over here, click on it. 
and you're going to see something here called collision. So the collision, if we click on it, it's going to add a collision modifier to this. So now this ball is going to know when it has soft bodies that it has to interact with the surface. And of course, it's the exact same thing with this guy here. So we're going to select the depress, and under here in the physics, come up and give that a collision as well. So now when we can we can get started knowing that this simulation here, this ball simulation will interact with its environment. So that is one of the basic fundamental principles that you can learn with um, physics and Blender. So let's select the ball itself and let's actually go over to our physics and up here you're gonna see something called soft body. Don't get it confused with rigid body, that's something else. This time we're gonna be looking at soft body. So select soft body. And now if you go to your first frame, which I recommend, so go to frame one, if you hit the space bar, you're gonna see this simulating. And there we have a ball, right? And that's pretty cool, but um, you can also come and adjust the settings here. So if we come over here to the so under the soft body settings, we actually wanna untick gold, because if I were to actually select this floor quickly and move it down and then play this animation again, you're gonna actually notice when I hit the space bar, it's just floating there. So it's not actually being affected by gravity the way we want. So what we need to do is with this ball selected under the a sim soft body settings here, you want to untick goal. So now if you run this, this is going to happen. But at the moment, it's just way, way too um, placid. And it's just kind of falling in on itself. So what we need to do is come over here and enable self collision. That just means that all of these um, vertices here, all the geometry that makes up this ball is going to interact with the ones around it. So it's going to have self collision as the name implies. So that's a little bit better. As we see now, when we go to frame one and we play the animation, it's getting better but we wanted to have a little bit more stiffness. Come over here to the edges settings, come to the drop down, and you can see these settings here. Now the one that we're gonna be mostly interested in at the moment is this one here called bending. So if you take the bending up, so let's give something like 12, let's type in 12, and let's come over here to the plasticity and make that something like three. Let's go back to frame one, and now let's hit the space bar, and look at that. It's reacting a lot more like we want, and if we change this, um, bending value here. So for example, if I make it eight and I go back to frame one and I play the simulation, we can see it's a little bit less. You can also affect things by changing this pull and push amount, but I don't usually mess around with that too much, only in some circumstances. So for now, we're just gonna leave everything as it is. And I think I'll leave the bending at eight. So let's get started by um, animating this hydraulic press over here, which is super simple. So what we need to do is we need to come to about frame 20. And on frame 20 with this hydraulic press here selected, we're gonna hit I, so we have it active, and we're gonna hit the I key, and we're gonna insert a location keyframe. So it's gonna start like this, come to frame 20, and in frame 20, it's our first keyframe. And let's come over to frame 50, or maybe even 60. So on frame 60, with this hydraulic press selected, we're gonna bring it down till it's kind of almost touching the floor, but not quite, so just something like that. And on frame 60 with it down here, we're gonna hit I and we're gonna insert another location keyframe. So now at frame 20, it knows that it needs to be here and at frame 60, it knows that it needs to be over here. Now at the moment, it's kind of slowing down because as I'm going scrubbing through the frames, it's trying to run the simulation. So I'm just gonna select this soft body object here. I'm gonna to go to the modifiers here and I'm just gonna disable it in the viewport so it won't, we won't be seeing anything. So let's select the hydraulic press here. So we want it to come down to here. We want it to kind of pause for a bit. So let's come to frame 80. With it still selected, we're gonna hit I and insert a location keyframe. So now we have a hold here. And now we can just come over here and just click here and highlight this first keyframe here on frame 20. It's now active. If we hit Shift D, it will copy it. So Shift D and drag it all the way to frame 110. So now let's have a look at that. If we go to frame one and we hit the space button, we can see it playing a little animation like that. And let's make the animation here 150 frames long. And um, yeah, so let's grab the ball now, our soft body object, go to the modifiers tab and enable it. And let's go over to frame one. And what we're also gonna do, um, so let's just quickly play it of course, let's just play and see what it looks like. So we're gonna see this. Now depending on the kind of um, system you're running, this could take um, a little bit of time, but it's, even for your average computer, this shouldn't be too bad with something like this. So you can see now it's slowly running the simulation. And I'm gonna show you how we can actually cache that out. So it, when we um, cache it out and we save the blend file, next time we open it up, it'll be fast. So we can actually see the simulation in like real time. So I'm just waiting for it here. Um, once it's done kind of going through here, I'll quickly show you what it looks like. Okay, so now it's gone through the whole simulation. I'll quickly just show you what it looks like because it kind of automatically caches it in. So you can see that's what we have. And that's looking pretty cool. 
So let's actually, um, so you can see it's actually popping up um, on the end there. So what we could do as well, and it'll also, the nice thing about this, it'll help save you some animation time. So when we're gonna actually cache this out, so let's select this soft body object and let's actually go over to our physics tab here. And under the soft body here, and we're gonna go to the cache here and we're gonna look at our animation. So we know if we scrub through this, our, animation, our hydraulic press comes down at frame 20, it starts moving down. It's got a little bit of a hold and in between 70 and 110, it starts moving up again. So as soon as it kind of, if we scrub through it, as soon as it starts leaving the crushed object, so in this case, that's gonna be frame 83. So we know we only really need to simulate this between frame zero and frame 83. So we're gonna come over here to the cache and we're gonna make the start frame, let's just leave that at one, but the end frame, we're gonna make that 83. And um, it might be different for you depending on how you've got things set up. And then we're just simply gonna hit bake and it's gonna bake that simulation out. So let's have a look at that. You can see it's just slowly going through it, but when it's done, um, we'll be able to play it and it'll be quick. Okay, so now it is done caching. So let's go to frame one and let's play the animation. So there we go. And then it comes up and the simulation stops. So it's just kind of dead still. And that kind of gives it the illusion of something being crushed. And we're not using keyframes here or any sort of rigging. This is just happening um, with the actual simulation here. Now you could um, go through the settings and adjust things, rebake things, use different objects. It doesn't have to be a sphere. And um, so I hope this has been just kind of like a little bit of an introduction to soft bodies. And I hope you guys can use this thing I've taught you today to make something. You could, you could use anything. I mean, you can put two cubes in here and kind of make them come together with animation and crush something. It's like the possibilities are pretty much endless. Mess around with the stiffness and stuff like that. So this is just an introduction. There's a lot more that can be said. Like you can start getting into like weight groups and pinning certain, certain parts of the mesh uh, for more advanced things. But I'm just gonna be keeping it simple today, just leaving it at this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out some other content. I do like full character courses and things on my channel as well. Things that are a little bit more interesting than this. So I'll see you guys next time.